It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the greatest time of the year, Christmas. Christmas has everything you could possibly need. Santa, snow, presents, Zod, everything is wonderful. And of course, let's not forget about the Christmas specials. The Christmas specials are a time-honored tradition. We sit around the TV and watch as many as we can. It's absolutely fantastic. But then there's that one Christmas special that sneaks in and spoils everything. The one Christmas special that makes the rest of the Christmas specials feel bad about themselves. That particular Christmas special is Rover Dangerfield. Well, okay, it's not entirely Christmas related, but a lot of it does take place around Christmas time, and I guess it's trying to relate some Christmas themes. But before we talk about this, it's probably best to talk about the person it was based on, Rodney Dangerfield. No respect. No respect. No respect. The late comedian was definitely known as a stand-up stand-up. Most comedians get rid of the idea of just going up and telling one-liners, but Dangerfield was one of the few stand-ups who kept it going. And to be fair, they were pretty funny. I, mean, I got no sex life. I tried to masturbate. I had a headache. <laughs> I tell you, my wife, she never went for me. Well, the first time I called her up, she told me, come on over, there's nobody home. I went over, there was nobody home. <laughs> they play around so young today, very young. You couldn't tell you they got birth control pills shaped like Fred Flintstone. You know? <laughs> that's what he was known for, his one-liners. And let's be honest, that's what he was best at. In terms of his movie experience, he did have two films that were big hits, Back to School on Caddyshack. These movies knew how to use his one-liners to the film's advantage. This movie does not. It's a painful little train wreck that's entirely based on just one joke. Rodney Dangerfield is a dog. That's it. There's literally nothing else to it. And if you think it's like other movies where you can say the actor was just a product of the Hollywood system, think again. Rodney Dangerfield had everything to do with this movie. He was the producer, handled the screenplay, came up with the idea. He even wrote the story with his pal Harold Ramis. How do you think that process went? Hey, Harold, I got this great idea for a kid's movie. It's me as a dog. I think that would be extraordinarily dangerous. Glad you like it. Bye! <laughs> so, the big question this movie asks is, can Rodney Dangerfield do anything in a kid's movie outside of telling one-liners? Well, not to give away the ending, but no. This is Rover Dangerfield. So we open on Las Vegas, where our four-legged friend lives. And right from the very beginning, you can see why this movie isn't going to work. I love your pom-poms. Oh, I turned that before. Oh, pardon me. Bones, bones, I forgot you're a poodle. Hey, first joke I made and I don't even get it. Ho oh. ho. So as you can see, the dog looks exactly like Rodney Dangerfield, which I don't think is a good thing. I wouldn't mind too much except that half the time it looks like his eyes are just staring off into space. Like they're animating a dead wooden puppet or something. Hey, look who's in town. Carmine's Canines. I used to work with them when I was a pup. Hey, so do I stand upright or walk on all fours? I wrote this movie and even I'm confused. Hey, gang, how you doing? Hey, hey. Where's Flappy? Carmine fired him. He couldn't remember the routines. Oh, I saw that coming. Flappy was dumb. How dumb was he? He used to walk backwards and wag his head. <laughs> Hilarious. So he could. I mean, dumb. When Carmine taught him how to sit, he forgot how to stand. Good one. Then he goes. When Carmine paper trained him, that was something. He went right in the paper. The only trouble is, Carmine was reading it. <laughs> yeah, um, how many more one liners are there in this movie? Oh, God! Well. I suppose it could be worse. I mean, it is a kid's film. I suppose they could be singing a song right now. No, 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 no! It's a dog's life and I love it. Las Vegas is the place for me. Oh, 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 oh. If this is the place to throw your cares away. Well, it's a dog's life and I love it. All in favor of skipping this song, say fuck off. Fuck off! Oh, thank you! So Rover goes backstage to visit his master. What a place, huh, Eddie? Big place, big place. You know how many people work here? Gee, I don't know, a joke. One out of four. <laughs> so Rover's master is a showgirl named Connie, which I gotta say is a pretty risky business. Doesn't she know that everybody got AIDS and shit? Oh, Rover, you wouldn't forget my birthday. <gasps> hey, what's happening, girls? Rocky. Gee, I wonder who the villain is. Out of all the people in this room, I guess it could be anybody. No, but seriously, I think it's showgirl number four. 
Actually, it turns out it's her boyfriend, Rocky. What a shock. As Rover watches him partake in a shady deal. Let's see the cash. It's all here. Relax. <laughs> it's another one of his phony deals. Hmm. The cops! It's a setup. Let's get out of here! Wow, that is the most paranoid gang of mobsters I've ever seen. Do all their deals go like that? I mean, they could be in the middle of a meeting and one guy could be like... It's a setup. Let's get out of here! Wait, it's just a dog! A stupid dog! This was your last chance, small time. You'll curse the day you ever messed with the easily excitable pussy gang. Uh, Rover. Rover, you're mine! I'm gonna get you! So Rover returns home only to find that Connie is leaving for a few weeks and Rocky Bow Bastard is going to be looking after him. Rocky will take care of you. Rocky? Yeah, I'll take care of him. This, of course, begs the question, why the hell doesn't he just run? I mean, the movie shows he has plenty of time. Or could he not think up of a clever one-liner before he could do it? <laughs> so he tosses Rover in a bag and proceeds to throw him over the Hoover Dam. So what's happening here? So what am I, dirty laundry? I'll miss you, Rover. Hey, hot damn, I'm rolling down the river. Looks like I'm all wet, I... not the ending, but trust me, you'll wish it was. So before all lame jokes can go to heaven, Rover is picked up by a couple of fishermen. Before they can take him to the pound, he jumps out of the car and starts exploring. Oh, I'm sorry, start saying one-liners to the crowd of people that isn't there! No hotels, no people, no fire hydrants. Hey, slow down, will you? You're eating like pigs. Thanks for making a total stranger feel like a total stranger. Please tell me he gets destroyed by some large piece of farm equipment. Go Farm Equipment! Whoa! Okay, okay, again, that's not the real ending, but instead we get, you're not gonna believe this, a one-liner! In fact, I'm not even gonna tell you the one-liner. No, I want you to just look at this scenario and tell me the worst possible joke that you can think up. Good luck. Let's look at your answers. No, there's no point in looking at the answers because I know you all got the same fucking answer. So, everybody in the whole goddamn world say on the count of three what exactly the joke is. One, two, three. I'm, I'm turning, turning into a corn dog. dog! Fuck you, movie! Fuck you! So he's picked up by a farmer and his son who want to adopt him. The son is played by the late famous voice actress Dana Hill, who you may recognize as Max from Goof Troop or Jerry from the Tom and Jerry movie. Needless to say, she still keeps her voice at half testicle dropped. Dad, stop the machine! We picked up a dog! His name is Rover. Well, at least that's what it says on the Nostalgia Critics High. Well, we can't keep him. We got too many dogs as it is. Keep me, Dad! Ugh, what am I doing? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this guy's been around. You know, they make it clear that people can't understand what the dog is saying. So, with that in mind, why are the father and son just staring at each other while the dog has an epileptic seizure? All right, Danny, you can keep him. Hooray! Oh, hey, kid, take it easy, will you? So, Rover is introduced to all the incredibly colorful characters on the farm. That is, they wouldn't be colorful if they got any screen time, but nope, we get to hear Rodney recite even more one-liners. Okay, you cotton balls. Yeah, I want to pay my doctor with a hog. Your little bow peep days are over. What's your sign? Well, at least he doesn't tell us the really bad unfunny jokes. No, 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 no. He sings those. I'd give up a bone for you. Okay, I don't need to hear about the bones he's giving to other dogs. When I first saw your face, my heart began to race. You fill my soul with ecstasy. Oh, I, you come here often? <laughs> oh, I would you know what? This section is so bad, I'm just gonna spend this time working on other comedians that could be bad anime spin-offs, but would at least be better than this one. Daisy, I would lie for you, die for you. I'd give up my red tie for you. Why, I would never bark at you. Because you are my dream come true. Alright, these are a little crude, but I think they'll still get the idea across. Um... 
There's Red Robin Williams, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, the Chris Rock, Eddie Lizard, oh, and probably the most obvious one, Penn and Teller. Yeah, they're shit, but they're still better than this fucking crap! So while trying to hit on another dog called Daisy, Rover realizes that he's supposed to be watching the sheep and leaves them behind. What an incredibly confusing joke. The sheep ended up in the tree. Well, how did the sheep end up in the tree? Why would they want to end up in the tree? Can somebody explain why the sheep ended up in the tree? It's my belief that these sheep are laboring under the misapprehension that they're birds. Notice they do not so much fly as plummet. <laughs> so the farmer locks Rover in the cellar until he can learn to behave himself. It's me, Daisy. But all that calcium. He'll lock you in here with me. Hey, I hope he sees you. How can you make jokes when you're locked up like this? <laughs> it's all I got! Haven't you noticed the painfully written dialogue in this picture? By the way, what's up with the lighting all of a sudden? We suddenly transformed into Apocalypse Bow Wow. You're an errand boy. Sent by grocery clerks. Besides, I missed a good life. Come on, I'd like to show you something. I know they have bright lights in the city, but do they have anything as beautiful as this? Ooh. And that was the romance, folks! Pretty brief, huh? It's like Dangerfield was all on board and then halfway through he decided he hated the idea. Yeah, and then I decide I'm gonna marry this dog and... No, that's stupid. How about I recite more one-liners? Hey, you think the rain will hurt the rhubarb? God! I think I'll change my name to Jethro. So River decides he doesn't belong on the farm and tries to run away. I'm nothing but trouble. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. God damn it, that's not the ending either. The film provides so many opportunities to kill this character, and yet they never take advantage of it. Just go old Yeller on his ass and get rid of him already. Don't give up. Okay, Daisy, if you believe in me. Okay, so Rover and Daisy have a scene, it ends. There's absolutely nothing to eat here. Rover and a turkey have a scene, it ends. In fact, the next couple of scenes are like that. They just sort of come and go. It's like drive-by cinema. Here's a scene, goodbye. Here's a scene, goodbye. Oh, and of course, this is all intermixed with the occasional musical number. And let me tell you, if there's ever been a song that had no reason to be made, I mean, an absolutely worthless idea for a musical number in a kid's movie, take a listen to this. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree is safe from me. Oh, what would Santa think of me if I did it on a Christmas tree? I'll soak in oak, I'll splash in ash, I'll do it on a peach or cherry. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. Oh. You know, whenever I see such pointlessness shoved into an animated film, I immediately think of all the trees chopped down to give us this fuckasaurus. In fact, I get an image of tree beer looking over the destruction at what a pathetic waste of life it is. You miss someone back home, don't you? Yeah. Another girl dog? But it's not what you think. I mean, she was too young, I was too young. It was puppy love. My God! Every line he says is like a slap in the face. It literally feels like every time he tells a joke, the character reaches out of the screen and smacks me. Boy, you heard her come and get it? This is try and eat it. Ow! So Rover comes across a pack of wolves who are after the farmer's turkey, but Rover tries to stop them. I'm glad we're okay. <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. Come on, you're okay, you're okay. Come on, come on. Come on, stop out of it, will you? Come on. I don't believe this. Okay, um, I'm sure many of you didn't see this incredibly dark scene in the movie theater, but uh, let me try and recreate what the audience reaction probably was. 
Come on, you're okay. You're okay. Come on. Come on. Stop on, will you? Come on. I don't believe this. So it's decided that Rover has to die for his crimes against the farm. That's about fucking time, if you ask me. I may have lived like a dog, but I can die like a man. I don't want to leave. No. I don't want to go. Please. I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm innocent. I... Did you hear from the governor? Well, at least he's going out with some dignity. I mean, let's face it. He could have told worse jokes. <sighs> Rover. I wish we spoke the same language. Oh, what? You don't speak bad jokies? But you see, I cannot have an animal on my farm killing other animals. This is hard for me, Rover. But you've taken a life. A life that we were going to take anyway. Um, but, uh, um... It was a life! Yeah, what she said. Get the title card ready. God damn it! So the wolves attack, but luckily Rover is on his A game and teaches them all a lesson. That one's for the three little pigs. I know what you're thinking. You'd rather be at Grandma's house. Uh, who do you think you're dealing with? Little Red Riding Hood? <laughs> wow, so he compared them to the wolf from the fairy tales three times. It was pretty much just telling the exact same fucking joke three times. You know what it's like? It's like someone made a movie out of that annoying duck hunt dog. And I want to shoot that little bastard just as much as I want to fucking shoot him! No respect at all. So they get the farmer back as everybody sees that Rover has saved the day. But Connie sees in a newspaper where Rover is now and oh wow. Connie, come on. Could, could you bend over and pick her up again? There you go. Yeah, that's good family entertainment. So the boy lets Rover know that Connie is coming to pick him up. His reaction is, of course, heartbreaking. Dad's gonna bring the pickup around and take you to the airport. <laughs> what an asshole. So just as Connie gets Rover back, her boyfriend comes in and accidentally reveals that he tried to kill the mutt. This results in a chase scene leading outside the casino. Okay, in here. What are you doing here? This is his setup. Wanna see Hoover Dam? So in case you're keeping score at home, kids, that's one turkey and one drug dealer that get the axe in this family movie. Yet somehow the duck hunt dog comes out alive. Life's a bitch. So as you'd imagine, Rover doesn't like his old environment and prefers to live back on the farm. So he drops Connie some hands and she drives him back and lets the farmer adopt him. Thus we end with our final revelation. Hey! I'm a father of five! Hey! Looks like I did end with a bang. And that's Rover Dangerfield, or as I like to call it, Unfunny Rodney Dangerfield Stand Up! It's basically the same thing as when celebrities try to write kids' books. Everybody thinks they can do it, but it takes a lot of talent to do it right. And this film does not do it right. While the animation at times can be pretty to look at, it's not worth the constant one-liners and extreme lack of any development. It's a clumsy story at best, and not worth all the time and effort it probably took to make it. If you want to see Rodney at his best, watch some of his stand-ups. If you want to see him at his worst, go find this dumbass movie and see why a bad idea should stay a bad idea. And let's pray to God there's no more animated comedian knockoffs. I mean, what's next? The Nostalgia Kitten? I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember... A CAT CREDIT CARD! Huh? Huh? No respect at all. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. A Christmas tree is safe from me. Oh, what would Santa think of me if I did it on a Christmas tree? I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. That's one thing that you'll never see. Oh, you'll just have to trust in me. I'll never do it on a Christmas tree. I'll soak in oak, I'll splash in ash. I'm turning into a corn dog. <laughs> <laughs>